everyone, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be looking at an application of differentiation, and that is curve sketching. And before we start, I'd just like to say thank you very much to Sophie and Boy for providing the solutions for today's example. So let's get to it. So, when you are wanting to sketch any kind of curve, you need to have certain critical points. And those critical points are your intercepts, turning points, and points of inflection. And each of these have a characteristic of their own. So for intercept, you get two of them, right? You get your x-intercepts, right? Assuming that the variables you are using are x and y. And you get your y-intercept. Right? And for your x-intercepts, you know that the corresponding y-value would be equal to 0. For the y-intercept, your x-values are equal to 0. Right? Then for your turning points, the first derivative of the function is 0 at that point. Yeah? So the rate of change, which is the gradient, is going to be 0. So you're looking at either maximum or minimum values. Your point of inflection is where your second derivative is going to be zero, right? So in the example we're looking at is y equals 27 minus 36x plus 12x squared minus x cubed. We need to find our first derivative. This is what we're going to use. And we are going to use the second derivative. Right? Please remember also that the notation, you can also use this notation if you want to. It means the same thing. Okay, so our first derivative is going to be minus 36 plus that times 2 is 24x minus 3x squared. Right? And then our second derivative is going to be 24 minus 6 x okay so these are the three functions that we're going to be working with so let's start off with our intercepts it doesn't really matter which order you do them in i just like to start off with the intercepts right and we're going to look where we look at our function y where x is equal to zero Right, so I'm going to look at the y-intercept first, which means that our x-value is going to be 0, which is where y equals 27. Our x-intercept is where y is equal to 0. Right, and that is going to be 27 minus 36x plus 12x squared minus x cubed has to be 0. And here you can factorize or use software in order to find it. And we get values 1, 145. So that's the first one. The second one, 7, 8, 5, 4, and the last one is going to be 3. Okay, so those are our intercepts. The next thing we're going to look at is our turning points. Right, so the turning point we know is where your derivative is zero. So your first derivative dy dx must be equal to zero. So in this case, our first derivative is minus 36 plus 24x minus 3x squared equals to zero. Right? And I am going to rearrange this. You can use the, um, the formula, the quadratic formula, in order to find this, or you can factorize, right? And just for the sake of time, I am just going to skip to the answer, right? So you can use, like I said, quadratic formula, or your, you just prime factorize. And you're going to find that your x value is going to be 2x equals to 6, 
right? Now, when you're sketching, you always need to have a coordinate, right? So that means you need to find the corresponding y value of this. But what you need to remember, once you've found what the x value of the turning point is, your corresponding y value, you don't use the derivative in order to find that, right? You have to use the original equation. So in order to find this, so uh, to find, let me just write it out corresponding y value where x equals to 2 you substitute into this one right the original equation the original function because that is what you're sketching you're not sketching the derivatives function right so you have to use this one okay so it's going to be 27 minus 36 times 2, 12 times 2 squared, 2 cubed, right? And you're going to find that is going to work out to 5, right? So the same way, you're going to do the same thing for x equals to 6. So for x equals to 6, you're going to find that your y value is going to be 27, right? And the way you find that again is to substitute into the original equation, right? Your y equation, because that's the one you're going to sketch, okay? So if I go back, let's just go back to all the different functions I've got. If I go back here, this is the one that you're interested in sketching, right? Okay, which means it's going to look, when you've drawn it, you know it's going to have, it's going to be something like this. You don't know what these values are going to be. But whenever you find an x value, so say you find an x value, in order to find the corresponding y value, you have to substitute into this equation here, not the others. Okay, so be very careful of that. So now that you know what these coordinates are. So your turning points, let me just write them out here. Our turning points are going to be 2 and minus 5 and 6 and 27. Right? Now you need to figure out is it a maximum turning point or is it a minimum turning point? Right? And the way that we do that, so to find maximum or minimum, right? we have to look and see whether or not the derivative at that point is positive or negative. Right? So you need to find out, oh it's the second derivative, sorry, the, deriv the second derivative whether it's positive or negative. So is the second derivative positive? Or is the second derivative negative at that point? So let's take, so 4, 2, minus 5, right? We know that our second derivative is, let's just go back, is going to be 24 minus 6x, right? So that is going to be 24 minus 12, that is 12, which means it is positive, right? Because it's positive, you're looking at a minimum value. Now, the way I like to remember this, right? The way I like to remember this is that 12 is bigger than 0, which means it is positive, which means it is a smiley face like that, which means it is a minimum value. Let me just move myself out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so that is a minimum value. Right? That's how I like to remember it. So then, if we take for the other one, which is 6 and 27, right? We're going to look at what is it 
is the value for the second derivative for that turning point. So it's going to be 6 times 6. So it's 24 minus 36. And what's that? That's going to be negative. So that, what is that? Minus 12. Right? Which is less than 0. Okay? So again, like I, the way I like to remember it is that it's negative. It's a sad face. Like that. Right? Which means you are looking at a maximum value for that. Okay, so now we've got the two turning points. We know we've got one minimum, one maximum value. The next one we need to look at is the point of inflection. Right? And that is where our second derivative, or if we write it like that, where that is zero. Right? The practical example of a point of inflection is your point of contraflexion in a beam, right? So that's basically where the curvature changes in your function, right? Or the curvature changes in your beam. So we remember that our second derivative is, oh, we've just used it, minus 6x, and that has to be 0, right? And that is where x is 4, if I'm not mistaken, yes, where x is 4. So what that means is that the, the curve of the graph is going to change. Then the corresponding y value of that 4. Remember, we're looking at where is the 4 on the original graph. So we would have to substitute x equals to 4 into the original function, which is going to be... Right? So we want to find where, what is the y value for where x is 4. So we substitute that into this function here. Right? And we end up with the value of 11. So we have where x is 4, y is 11. That is our point of inflection. Okay? So then when we sketch the graph, we know we've got an axis like this. Oh, my lines are not very straight. But this is free end, so forgive me for that. That's going to be y. That'll be x. And our function is going to look something like this. Something like that. Right? So these over here are x-intercepts. That is your y-intercept, and I think that was 27, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that was 27. Right? This one is 1, 145. That one is... What's that one was 3. And that one seven comma eight five. Right? Here is your maximum. Here is your minimum, right? This is where that is 6, and the corresponding value was, what was it? 6 and 27, right? So that there, 6 and 27, this one here was, what was it? 2. And minus 5. So that is 2 and minus 5. And your point of inflection was at somewhere over here. Right? 4 and 11. What I want to do is I just want to blow up this piece here. That point of inflection. Right? And basically what you're looking at, if I exaggerate the curve, it's where the curve is going up like that and then all of a sudden it changes direction. So you see there, at some point, if you were put, to put a line through, the derivative at that point would be zero, right? So if you put a line through it, you'll see, you see there the curvature is changing. It's leaning this way, and then all of a sudden it changes the other way. And the point at where it changes is this point of inflection here. 
okay so that is how you would sketch any curve it goes for any of the functions I and mean, if you square uh, cube to the power four you would just get for to the power four you're probably going to get more peaks right more maximums and more minimums okay well i hope that video was useful to you um if you did find it useful please give it a thumbs up uh give it a like if not please leave a comment as what i could add what i could maybe explain a bit better um but i will see you in the next video bye